So good to see you. It's, I'm so glad to be here with you. I've been gone for a few days. It was the weekend. I took Monday off. And so here we are. So I'm a neuroscientist. I'm not a medical doctor. Please talk to your medical doctor before doing anything that affects your health. And I'm here to be of help and to answer your questions about health and wellness. If you're just logging in, please put your name, your first name, and where you're from in the chat. I'd love to see where you're from. This is my first time, um, or one of my first times doing my live during this, th during this time. And so I'm looking forward to seeing new faces. So please put your first name and your country or state. Uh, where are you from? Rodrigo from Miami. A from New Jersey. What's your first name? Is that Luna? Please put your first name and where you are from. A lovely mindset. Hey, I'm in New Jersey. Awesome. Shannon from Detroit. Terry from California. Please put your first name and where you are from in the chat. Lori from the UK. Awesome. Hi, Susan from Massachusetts. Hi, Susan. Hi, from Ireland. Best foods for anti-aging. Mark from San Francisco. Gerald from Texas. I'm in Texas right now. At least from New Jersey. John from Texas. AMR from Egypt. Awesome. Georgia from Texas. Love your videos. Thank you. What's your name and where you're from? Elizabeth from Texas. We got a lot of Texans going on here. Best food for cerebral. Aaron in South Carolina. Hi, Aaron. Vera from Delaware. Joe from Ohio. I was born there. Big thing about lines, Maine. Uh, Melissa from Mexico. Hi, from New Mexico. New Mexico. Some are from Fort Worth. So if you're just arriving, please put your first name and where you're from. I'd love to say hello. Arizona. Pardon me, I have a little dog here. You want, you want to say hi? I want to say hi, puppy? She wants attention while I'm on here. California. From Turkey. Bristol, England. Isaac from California. Arizona. The Bronx. Vivian from Vancouver. Ooh, that sounds good. Washington State. Alberta, Canada. A friend of mine is from Alberta, Canada. I just talked to her today. Wendy from Georgia. Gabby from New York. Lisa from Alabama. Kenny from Newfoundland, Canada. My favorite neuroscientist. Well, thank you. That's so kind of you. Detroit, North Carolina. Hello from Poland. Poland. This is the first time I've seen someone from Poland. Welcome. Susan from Mississippi. Forrest from the moon. Wow, it's quite amazing. We have reception on the moon. That's awesome, Forrest. Bernardo from New Mexico. Hello from Portugal. Hey, Nola. N-O-L-A. Deborah from the UK. Fantastic. What's up from Calgary? New Jersey. Israel. Wonderful. Miami. Hey, I'm going there soon. New York. Dublin, Ireland. Turkey. Hello from the UK. This is so wonderful. Dubai. This is so great. I'm so glad to be here with you. Please let me know how I can be of help. I think this is one of the first times I've been doing, I'm doing a live at this time. Usually it's later, later my time. And so, um, Please let me know what I can help. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at some questions and then I'm going to ask you which one you want. Then please respond. And then, um, oh, thank you. I so appreciate those comments. The Philippines. And then I'm going to answer whatever question is of most interest to you. Uh, first, I have an amazing story for you. A friend of mine, um, I'm staying with a friend here in Austin, Texas. I, I went to graduate school here. I'm going to visit some professors I, I used to know. And my sister actually lives here. And yesterday was an interesting day. Um, the full moon, I don't know if you believe in astrology, it's really interesting. There's two types of astrology. There's Egyptian astrology, and I forget what the other one is. Um, but uh, it's really interesting. The full moon, some, some interesting things can happen there. And yesterday, um, the full moon was kind of split into two different days. So there was like a first day that was kind of unsettling, and a second day that was about abundance. And so uh, my friend's partner, who I'm living with, or I'm staying with, she, she got fired yesterday. She got a, listen to this. This is really, I think it's a really poor way of treating people. She got an email saying, hey, we have a sales update. She's a commission-only salesperson, mind you. She only makes the company money. You can't lose money with a commission-only salesperson unless they're chewing up resources or hurting your reputation. So she, she gets a message saying, um, please, like, cop on the Zoom call. We have a sales update. And on that call, she, they fired everyone. Hey. Oh, that she's on the phone right now with my, uh, with my friend. They fired everyone on this call and she told me about this. I said, this can't be right. You're making them money. You don't fire a salesperson who's making money. That's the exact opposite thing to do. And so I say, listen, this has gotta be a mistake. She says, no, they, they fired me. I can't get my commission check. And so this really big thing, which is really unfortunate. If you've ever been fired, blow up the chat if you've ever been fired. Like if you ever list lost, 
a job. Let me know if you can relate to being fired or losing a job. I've gotten fired from most of the jobs I've had. I'm just, I'm not, I'm not super employable. I like, I work really hard, but then I try to improve the systems. And then the owner's like, what are you doing? Never, Muriel, uh, you've never been fired. Yep. Oh, hell yeah. That's what I'm talking, Tanya. Totally. Hey, yeah, you've been, you've been fired. Never. Really wild spirit. Maybe you're not that wild. Glamour change. I walked away. Good for you. So, um, magnesium does help with anxiety. So, um, so my friend gets fired. Three hours later, uh, I'm in the back. Uh, I think I'm eating sardines. And she comes, she's on the phone. And then she says, hey, they just offered me my job back. I'm like, really? That's amazing. And so that was, that, was, that was the day. And what she learned was number one, it's not a good idea to depend on others for job security because it got taken away like that. And she was performing, she was hitting her numbers, she was selling, she, was, she sells solar energy, which is a really good thing here in Texas. There's a lot of sun and, and her, her livelihood got taken away from her. Number two, have skills that are transferable to other things. So, she, so her, her jobs as a salesperson immediately transferable over to, an, to another sales position or to um, another solar company. I said, listen, you're gonna get a job with another solar company in a week. Just go in there and say, look, give me the, give me the numbers. I'll sell this to you right now and you can tell me if I'm any good. And, and, that's, and if I were hiring sales people, I'd be like, great, here's what our system costs. Uh, go for it, sell it to me. And that would be enough to get hired. So um, develop skills that are transferable. So if you are interested in neuroscience, if you're interested in preventing Alzheimer's disease and optimizing your brain health, you're in the right place. And some things you might be interested in are learning how to do research. You can, uh, first of all, my, my, one of my favorite resources is Healthline. If you have a health question, you can go to Healthline, just search, um, you know, uh, what, what's, what's a good question? Does magnesium help with anxiety? Healthline. Or health benefits of magnesium? Healthline. Search that in your search bar, that'll pull up a great article on that topic. I do a lot of initial research on Healthline to see what the general benefits are of supplements and herbs and so forth. And they link to the scientific papers and you can read those, which I recommend you learn how to do because it's helpful to know how to read a scientific paper because quite frankly, the medical doctors in the world don't have time for this or they don't make the time. Rarely are medical doctors simply learning new things to see how they can better serve their patients. Really, they're, they're catching up. And this, is, this has gotten worse with insurance. This has gotten worse with um, you know, doctors having to spend half their manpower or half their woman power or half their human power going through insurance documents to pay for things. It's really, it's really sad. And so doctors are no longer up to date on medicine. And you'll hear this, you, I love you too. Um, you'll hear this from people. They'll say, my doctor says brain supplements don't work. My doctor said there's nothing to do about Alzheimer's disease. My doctor said that thing doesn't work. Well, clearly that doctor is not informed on the current science. And all they'd have to do is go, is go onto Healthline or Google Scholar, by the way, scholar.google.com, one of my favorite sites. And then I type in a key search word and it pulls up research papers on that keyword. So that's a really helpful skill that I learned in graduate school that served me really well is how to do research online. And if you're interested in these sorts of things and you, I think you wanna have power over your health because unfortunately, um, large institutions aren't very good at keeping us healthy. All you have to look at in the United States is that we are the wealthiest country in the world. We have the best technology. And amazingly, we, uh, we have a really bad lifespan. Our lifespan is declining. It's, the, it's declined for the first time since World War II. This was about three years ago, and it continues to decline because we are dying of preventable diseases really caused by our food supply, but also by a poor medical system that promotes a, a bad diet. And so I highly recommend you, um, you really take, take your health into your control. I'm 40 years old, by the way, if you're wondering, how old, how old am I? I'm getting, I got the receding hairline. I look really good relative to my, to my brother and my dad. They're much, they have much more hair loss than I do. Um, so my hair is sticking around pretty long compared to my, uh, the other men in my family. I'm 40 years old and, um, and yeah, I've been, I, I'm here, here to be of service to you. Sorry, I'm, I'm pseudo answering questions as they, as they pass up. What do I think about cholesterol meds? I'm, I'm a, so I'm a neuroscientist, I'm not a medical doctor, I'm not giving you medical advice. And I'm a little bit concerned about going quite down that, um, that rabbit hole. That's a, that's a very specific kind of medical question. And so I kind of, I, I don't want to answer that because I, I, I'm, I'm not really able to give you a complete answer uh, without, without knowing you and looking at your numbers. Uh, so here are some things. I highly recommend the documentaries. If you're sitting in food, and I recommend really treating any uh, neurological issue or any psychological issue and preventing uh, Alzheimer's disease with 
food. Check out, write these down, The Perfect Human Diet. It's a YouTube uh, documentary, check that out. And then Fat or Fiction, that's a great one. And then I think it's documentary, it's just called Fat. Um, check those out. They're all on YouTube. They're all available for free. They're great. They detail the history of the science, the history of how we lost um, our way regarding diet and how other countries aren't nearly as bad. So I'm sure you've seen that uh, you know France eats high amounts of saturated fat, but they don't have high levels of heart disease like we do. What's the deal with that? Ask, ask your medical doctor. Ask, ask anyone. Ask a dietitian. How come you know the American Heart Association says... Uh, fact or, fat or fiction documentary. Yes, that's exactly right. Ask, ask a nutritionist or a dietitian. How come the American Heart Association says don't eat saturated fat? France eats a lot of saturated fat and they have fewer heart attacks than us and they smoke. Tell, tell us what's the deal. Most people won't have an answer. And I didn't have an answer for you uh, in, until, I, until I learned about the benefits of, um, of being low carb. When you reduce carbohydrates, carbohydrates promote the storage of fat in the body. It's not, it's not as simple as if you eat something that's fatty, that becomes fat in your body. That's not the way it works. It doesn't, uh, remember cholesterol, who remembers 80s, the 1980s and cholesterol and eggs and them telling, do not watch. Can someone write the documentaries down? Here they are, fat or fiction, the perfect human diet and fat. There's two of them. There's like fat one and fat two. Check those out on YouTube. They're great. Um, so, and, and so our diet's really important. Oh, by the way, it doesn't work. So an egg is filled with egg yolks. Blow up the chat if you remember when egg yolks were, were evil. Egg yolks were bad. You weren't supposed to eat egg yolks and you were throwing them away. You're just eating egg white omelets. Blow up the chat if you remember that. That was, that was really, well, I was growing up in the 80s. I remember that. Yeah, you remember that, not to eat eggs. Totally, I was afraid to eat eggs. Even the Simpsons had a joke about the eggs. And actually they were right. The, um, you know, the, the, the egg council was saying, look, though they do contain cholesterol, eggs have not been proven to, to increase serum cholesterol in the hu human bloodstream. And that's exactly right. Cholesterol you eat does not become cholesterol in your blood. That's not the way it works. Uh, our, cholesterol is so important. Our body is able to make its own cholesterol. We don't need to eat outside cholesterol. And so what happens is we eat cholesterol and that basically gets turned into bile, which is in a, a digestive juice that's used. So, so the cholesterol you eat does not become cholesterol in your body. What increases cholesterol, what increases fat is, tr is, is carbs because carbs become fat and um, carbs are linked to fatty liver disease and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, all the sugars. We now have children because they're eating so much sugar. We have children who have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. This didn't exist before the 80s. Before the 80s, I don't, it's either the 80s or 70s, we didn't have non-alcoholic non fatty liver disease. Only alcoholics had fatty liver. That's the only person who would have a fatty liver because your body treats alcohol like sugar. Um, and when it has too much of it, it stores it, it stores it as fat and it's trying to protect the body from it. And when you drink too much alcohol, it, uh, your body ends up storing it as fat, fat around the liver, it decreases liver function. This happens to people who eat a lot of carbs. Now, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is basically caused by eating too much carbs and the liver is trying to protect the body and the liver starts turning all this carbs into fat and that some of that fat accumulates around the liver and, and we lose liver function. Um, and now this is happening in children. Can you imagine a child is getting non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and we're not making changes to the recommended diet? I'm gonna say that again. Children, adolescents, uh, you know, 15 and younger are getting non-alcoholic fatty liver disease from eating too much sugar and we're not changing the dietary recommendations. It's, it's, a, it's a catastrophe. And so you really need to take your family's health and your health in your own hands, do your own research and find out what's best for you and your health and then, and then stick to that. And, um, and it's really, really important. The general recommendations are reduce processed carbs. Don't eat processed foods. Don't eat packaged foods. Don't eat refined sugars. Those are just really, really bad stuff. Um, and then when you eat meat, eat healthy meat. That means industrial meat's really bad for us because industrial meat is fed uh, food that they're not meant to eat. So this is feeding chicken um, wheat or feeding chicken soy, or this is feeding cows soy or cows wheat. Cows don't eat wheat, cows eat grass. You wanna eat grass-fed cows. So eat, eat grass-fed beef, eat grass-fed lamb, eat pastured chicken. That means the chicken's outside scratching up the earth, eating bugs. You want pastured chicken? I just went to Costco. Costco has pastured eggs. That's really cool. So, so eat uh, high-quality protein. It's worth the investment because we're talking about your health. We're talking about your energy. We're talking about your life. It's worth it.
Um, and we're the worst in the United States. We have more food additives. We have more pesticides and herbicides approved in the United States than they do in Europe. It's really, really bad. In Europe, since 2000, you've not been allowed to inject uh, antibiotics or give antibiotics to livestock to fatten them up. That's not true in the United States. In the United States, you can give antibiotics to farm animals to fatten them up. That's allowed. And this is a real big problem because antibiotics in the animals means we're eating antibiotics, mean that kills the good bacteria in our bodies. So you don't want um, cows that have been injected or cows that have consumed antibiotics to make them fatter, which is legal in the US, because you don't want to ingest those antibiotics and kill your good gut bacteria. So if I can get one thing to you, please, 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 what do I think about cow's milk? So according to the, to the and it's interesting you asked this, Max Lugavere and I had a, had a back and forth about this. So he's right, milk is not inflammatory for all humans. Milk is inflammatory for those who are lactose intolerant. At least it's uncomfortable for those who are lactose intolerant. That's about between 40 and 50% of humans, 40 to 50% of Americans, and about, I think, 70% of people worldwide are lactose intolerant. I don't know what the exact data is. We'll just say it's 50. So about half of people uh, in the United States and half of people in the world would do better not eating dairy because they are uh, lactose intolerant, and that's not a good thing. Um, number two, I, I mentioned you don't want to eat dairy with uh, polyphenols. Polyphenols are plant nutrients. They're the colorful, they're the bright colors in plants, like in coffee. And so I made a video, don't add dairy to your coffee because it binds, the protein in milk binds to the coffee and prevents you from absorbing the polyphenols, the benefits of it. So that's not good. So you don't want to eat dairy. For, in my opinion, I know I do better being dairy free. And I think I might be lactose intolerant or lactose resistant or something because I don't feel good when I drink dairy. I know I don't feel good when I drink heavy cream. And I love heavy cream. I love white Russians. Blow up the chat if you like white Russians or if you like the movie The Big Lebowski. Like I loved that movie so much in high school. When I'd go out in high school, my friends were drinking beer. I, I would bring white Russians and I'd drink white Russians. I thought it was great. And so I would most best. Yes, I got some yeses on the white Russians. And so I'd, get, uh, I'd bring that to, um, to parties and I, I love drinking white Russians. They're delicious. Kahlua, vodka, and cream, so good. But the cream, I felt so sick. I felt so heavy. It just was not good. And so I know I don't do well with cream. I love cheese. I don't think my body does well with cheese. So until cheese is made a different way or maybe I need to go to Europe where the dairy is better, uh, my body doesn't do good with cheese. So that's my answer about milk. So here's what I'd love to do. Nut milks are great. Here, here are the options. You want organic. I'm not going to take um, uh, other people right now, but thank you for asking. So here, so here are the, the nut milks. You can do uh, almond milk, coconut milk, cashew milk, probably macadamia. Ideally get organic. Avoid soy. Please, please, please avoid soy. Human beings did not evolve eating soy, and human beings did not evolve drinking cow dairy. Let me say that again. Human beings did not evolve eating soy. We did not evolve eating uh, drinking cow milk. Those are new. Those are new as of 10,000 years. Current agricultural practices are new as of 10,000 years ago in the Fertile Crescent, where civilization was born um, in what is now, I think, current Saudi Arabia. I think that's where the Fertile Crescent was. This is the birth of civilization. This is where we started having um, cities and towns and where we started having technology and more reading and writing and specialized labor. And so civilization is the first time that we had people with specific jobs. Prior to this, we were hunters and gatherers. So the men primarily would go out and hunt and fight other tribes. And the women would gather and stay at home, watch the fire, take care of the families and, and take care of everything when, we, um, when, the, when the men were gone. That's, that was the specialization of labor, generally speaking. Once we had civilizations, we had people who were carpenters and people um, who were, uh, you know, who would cut down wood, people who would grow the food, people who would, who would cook food. We had people who would make clothing. We had specialization of labor. So civilization is great. Agriculture is great. The challenge is we start growing food we're not used to eating. We start growing grains. Human beings really didn't eat grains before uh, the, the agricultural revolution, the birth of civilization 10,000 years ago. So for basically, and you'll learn this in the, the movie, The Perfect Diet, for humans, the perfect human diet, Human beings existed as Homo erectus for about 2 million years, 2 million years ago. And then um, we started eating more uh, meat, which gave us more omega-3 fatty acids, which allowed us to grow bigger brains. 
And then 10,000 years ago, we started civilizations, we started growing food, which is, which is wonderful, allows us to feed more people and not have to hunt and gather as much, so it saves time. Challenges, we're eating foods we're not used to, like grains. And so generally speaking, I avoid foods that we have not been eating for a long time, like corn, like soy. We, we really haven't eaten soy. And soy in the United States is especially bad because it's genetically modified. It's sprayed with Roundup. You want to avoid Roundup. Roundup is glyphosate. Glyphosate is a neurotoxin. It's associated with cancer. My guess is it will be associated with Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, other forms of dementia, other forms of neurodegenerative diseases. We don't have that data yet. I'm making a prediction. It might be as soon as 20 years. Same thing with the people who live in Flint, Michigan. The people who are drinking that dirty water that's really damaging for them. There will be increases in Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, and dementia, and, and other forms of neurodegenerative diseases from people in Flint, Michigan because of the poor quality water they're drinking. So I eat food that my ancestors ate for the last two million years, generally speaking, to the best of my ability. Um, and when I don't, I don't beat myself up. I just um, I really try to stay gluten-free. That lasts for a while. Gluten-free, like if you eat gluten, that can stick in your body for 30 days. I really don't do that. I avoid glu gluten the most. Uh, some people are asking about oat milk. Oat milk is better, in my opinion, than dairy. Challenge is oats, we have not evolved eating oats. And so those don't go as well. And so oats are carbs. And so uh, you can drink oat milk. That is better, in my opinion, than dairy milk. And um, oat, milks are high, oat milk is high in carbs. I'd recommend a nut milk, almond, um, cashew, macadamia, and something else. I'm not taking other guests right now, but thank you for asking. Um, and so those, did I just hear a cow? I don't think so. So, so those are some, some other options for you. I would choose oat milk over, over dairy and, and do what's best for you and you know, do your own research. You know, not everything's good for everybody. I think avocados are great. I think strawberries are great. My body doesn't do well with avocados and strawberries. There's a great book called Eat Right for Your Type. It's a diet book about blood type. When I was in high school, I learned a couple things that were incorrect. Number one, um, I just answered about oat milk, Jonna. No, I don't think so. It's not good. It's, it's too, too carb heavy. We want, we want low carb. We want to eat foods our ancestors ate. That's the general idea. Um, by the way, it's a great reason to go fluoride free. Uh, mother's milk, um, when a mother breastfeeds a baby, her body filters out the fluoride that's in the water that she drinks. It removes almost all of it. That's a great indication. So it's trying to protect the baby from the fluoride and from the other toxins that might be in the water that the mother's drinking to make the breast milk. And so, so baby's first meal is fluoride free. That's a good indication. We as humans aren't supposed to be eating, aren't supposed to be adding fluoride to our water that gets ingested and becomes part of our teeth, our bones, and, uh, and other tissues. About half the fluoride we have, half the fluoride we consume is excreted in the urine. The other half, I think, stays in the body. I think that's the same. Uh, I might be con confusing that with triclosan, which was a, um, that was uh, used in hand soap. That was a antibacterial used in hand soap. That would also stay in our bodies as well. So when we, we would use soap uh, that had antibiotics in it. Hey, hey, simmer down there. When we use soap that had an antibiotics in it, those antibacterial, what would happen is that would then get into the water and that would stay in the water. And then when we drink tap water, we drink it and that would stay in our bodies. About 80% of people tested positive in their urine for triclosan when we had that, meaning most people were consuming water that had triclosan in it. Very, very scary. I was actually part of an initiative at the University of Texas at Austin when I was a grad student there to get triclosan removed from the bathrooms and was actually successful. It was very cool, it made national news. And then about, about three months later, three months later, there was an episode on television. Uh, it, was a, it was a doctor show that showed triclosan poisoning. And I think a year later, they finally banned triclosan. There's other antibacterials out there in soap. Well, hi there, people wanna see you. People wanna say hi. You wanna say hi? Oh, hi Ken. You wanna say hi Ken? You're a good dog. And then we have this like machine that's running around that's, that's vacuuming, I forget what it's called. It's kind of a little buzzing sound. Okay, is carry coffee good for you? The challenge with carry coffee is it's not organic. And my, my mother is really funny. I hope she doesn't mind me telling the story. So I now I know where I get my, my tenacity. So we're walking around the mall and my mother, there's a Keurig machine and, and she has one. And she goes up to the Keurig representative who's selling stuff. And she says, hey, when are you gonna have organic Carrig stuff. 
And he says, actually, we can't make organic because that will actually reduce the consistency of our coffee and reduce the quality. My mother says, oh, that's a bunch of BS. You need to do organic. And she storms off and I'm in tow like, wow, all right, mom, way to tell the sales rep that your product is poisoning people. So you want organic coffee because uh, coffee is one of the most pesticided crops in the United States and it's just bad news. Um, so you want organic coffee, please, please, please get organic coffee. People keep asking me about hair loss. Why do, I, why do I look like I know about hair loss? Clearly I don't. What I'm doing with hair loss is I'm trying to slow down my aging and or reverse aging. I know that's not a technical term, but I want to lengthen my telomeres, which are the end caps on my DNA. Um, some things I'm looking at doing are one, I've, I've shared these with you in videos, NMN, nicotinamide mononucleotide, AKG, I forget what that stands for. At the moment, that AKG is shown to help, uh, Dr. David Sinclair talks about both of them, about uh, being uh, anti-aging longevity supplements. I also take quercetin, and all these are, are designed to be for longevity. I also get really good sleep. I exercise regularly, and so these are helpful. And I have, I've gotten away from my meditation practice. I wanna get back into that. Lowering stress is really helpful for slowing down the aging process. So these are some things that I'm doing to help slow down aging and hopefully regrow some hair. And then I may do stem cell treatments. I wanna do stem cells first in my joints. I'm 40 and I want to have really good joints. So start now, regrow the cartilage now. And then stem cell treatments in my scalp may regrow some hair. We will see how that goes. Carnivore diet thoughts. And so there's a couple of people who do carnivore who swear by it. Uh, I don't know if that's a long-term sustainable diet because our gut bacteria, our gut really want they really want fiber. And so we get fiber from plants. So our ancestors, here's what they ate. They ate wild nuts, they, they ate wild plants that they found, which was a lot. Um, and they were very nutrient dense and full of fi with fiber. They ate wild nuts and they ate meat. It's generally what they ate and fish, depending on where they were. That's what, that's what our ancestors ate. So I recommend eating, eating plants. I recommend a diet rich in plants and the protein that you eat has gotta be high in protein. That's a really good idea. If you are um, over age 60, I think the recommendation is 0.7 grams of protein per pound of body weight. That's to maintain muscle mass. This is really important. As we grow older, we become frail if we don't take care of ourselves. It's called sarcopenia. It's the decrease of muscle mass. By the way, the decrease of bone mass is called osteopenia. You don't want that either. The way to avoid this is number one, to exercise, keep your bones healthy. Number two, continue to eat healthy foods and supplements. Um, and that, and for, for sarcopenia, for preventing the loss of muscle, that means protein. So 0.7 grams of protein per pound of body weight. Let's think of, how, I already said how old I am, Joyce, I'm 40. Um, so you wanna eat a lot of protein to make sure that you're not losing muscle mass. And protein also is filling and can help reduce the amount of sugars that we eat. And if you wanna lose weight, you really wanna reduce the amount of sugars. But this is really interesting, the low fat diet that's promoted. So people say, if you just eat a low fat diet and lean protein, then you'll lose weight. That's likely true. The challenge is that's a really hard diet to do. If you cut out all saturated fat and you, you, you cut out fats and you only eat lean protein, you're not getting any fats, you're gonna be hungry. Most of us are hungry if we don't eat fat. And so this diet that's recommended, it probably works. If someone were to, especially if they cut out um, sugar, they cut out sugar and fat. And I, don't, I guess what they're eating is they're eating grains and rice and pasta, but they're also eating some fruits and vegetables. Those people might lose weight, but that diet's very hard, very hard to stick to. I love fat. I love the taste of fat. Our tongues are designed to taste fat. When I was in culinary school, we tasted a mustard and we tasted a mayonnaise. And they said, which one tastes more moist, more wet. And we all agreed the mayonnaise did. And the reason is the mustard has more water, the mayonnaise has more fat. Our tongue likes the taste of fat, it tastes moist, it tastes good. There's a reason why we like fatty, salty things. By the way, your body needs salt. Salt was a rare commodity. Salt was, salt was hard to get. Only recently, when salt production has become super cheap, have, has salt been everywhere? And salt's everywhere because it's inexpensive and it tastes good and it's put in all these packaged foods. Restaurants use it. I used, to, I used to work in restaurants. I, I know we, we, we season correctly. We add enough salt to really bring out the flavor. And that's a good amount of salt to ingest. The challenge is people eat processed foods that, don't, that have too much salt. By the way, and I learned this from Max Lugavere, the number one source of, source of salt in the diet. Who wants to guess? Drop it in the chat right now. Uh, what do we think the number one, number one source of salt is, let's say in the American diet. So what's the number one source of salt in the American diet? Take a guess. 
Let me know in the chat. Can I recommend anything for brain fog? Yes, diet, meat, chips, sugary foods, water, bread, bread, bread's right. So Zurgarov, what's your name? Meat, what's your name? Chips, preservatives, it's, it's, uh, it's bread. Bread is the winner, interestingly enough. And so doctors will say, watch your salt, but rarely do they say, watch your bread. So if you wanna reduce your salt, reduce your bread. Great way to reduce the amount of salt. And then you can season your, your food appropriately. No way bread, yeah, I know. I got that from Max Lugavir. I think he was talking to Dr. David Perlmutter. That's where he learned that. Um, so salt's good for us. And then Dr. Um, Andrew Huberman, who's got the Huberman Lab, one of my favorite podcasts, he talks about how important salt is for our biochemistry, and it is. It's involved in, you know, if, we do, if we have a, a, a salt imbalance, if we have an ionic imbalance, our, our cell membranes don't work well, they don't communicate effectively, it's really important. So make sure you're getting adequate salt. Most of us are getting too much salt because we eat packaged foods. Once you remove packaged foods, um, it's a different story. What salt? I mean, sodium chloride, NaCl, regular table salt. Do we think we should be taking more iodine? Most of us would benefit from more iodine, um, you know, and um, especially thyroid issues. So thyroid issues are massive. So if you don't have enough iodine, you can get something called goiter. And, um, but that's, that doesn't necessarily mean you're not iodine deficient, right? That's the big problem. So, so low vitamin C is called scurvy, right? But just because you don't have scurvy doesn't mean that you have the, the optimal levels of vitamin C. So live, love, life. Don't take, don't take sodium chloride. I'm not saying take sodium chloride. I'm saying season your food at home appropriately. And I recommend cutting out packaged foods that are rich in salt. And then most of us, um, if you exercise, it's helpful to add a little bit of salt uh, to the water. Make sure you're drinking enough water. At Burning Man, where we're sweating profusely outside for hours, especially as we're building camp, we add salt to our water to replenish some of the salts that we're using. Magnesium is also important as is selenium, and then there's another one, potassium. We lose a lot of potassium as we sweat, and so I've been adding potassium to my stuff as well. Um, okay. So that's what, we got, that's what we got here. People have been asking me questions, what to do for this, what to do for that. I really recommend, you know, it's really inappropriate for people in a medical position. I'm not, I'm not a medical doctor, I'm not a medical professional, I'm not giving you medical advice. I find it highly inappropriate that people, medical professionals, uh, give, uh, offer, offer diagnoses and offer chemical treatments to people, uh, pharmaceutical treatments, without asking about diet. Diet is really important. Diet is key to health, and that's not hard to understand. Eat garbage for a day, see how you feel, and then eat really well for a day, see how you feel. Aside from the taste, you'll notice, boy, when I eat healthy food, I actually felt better. I slept better. I thought better. Um, and so uh, Dr. Her name is Georgia Edie? Edie or Eden? I think it's Dr. Georgia Edie. She's a psychiatrist, and I saw her in one of these documentaries. Actually, she's in a couple of them. She shared that she recommends a low-carb diet to her clients, to her patients, instead of, um, instead of pharmaceuticals, because she finds that a low-carb diet is a mood stabilizer, and it gives consistent energy to the brain and to the body and lots of nutrients. And people aren't thinking about food all the time because they're getting enough of the healthy fats, enough of the, health, enough of the healthy protein, enough vitamins and minerals. People are doing the, lo the, low, uh, the low fat thing. Those people are constantly thinking about food. And if they're eating high carbs, she finds their mood is unstable. So she says, I tell my clients this. She says, I tell my patients this. High sugar, foods high in sugar, high in um, uh, fruit juice, these, these packaged processed foods, these are mood destabilizers. Think about sugar as a food, as a mood destabilizer. It destabilizes your mood, and this makes us more vulnerable and susceptible to both neurological disorders and psychiatric psychological disorders. So that's really good. What are good fats to eat? Eat the fats in, found in foods naturally. So fatty fish, great example. Fatty fish are filled with omega-3 fatty acids that are super, super healthy, your EPA and your DHA. If you are vegetarian or vegan and you don't eat fish, you can also do algae omega-3 oil. Um, you can also do flaxseed oil. That's really helpful. But flaxseed oil, only about 15% of the flaxseed oil gets converted to the helpful omega-3s that we really need. Um, so it's not great, but it's help. it is helpful. Um, other healthy fats include, think about avocado, avocado oil, um, nuts and seeds are, are good. Um, it depends what seeds you want to avoid the seed oils, avoid aside from flaxseed. So avoid 
uh, sunflower oil, safflower oil, corn oil, cottonseed oil, rapeseed oil, also known as canola oil. Avoid those seed oils. Those are the omega-6 oils. Those are the bad oils. And then the fats you want are, are coconut oil and flaxseed oil, flax seeds, chia seeds. Make sure you soak them. Um, walnuts, almonds, macadamia, Brazil nuts only have about three of those a day, no more. Otherwise, you can get too much selenium. I believe it's three. It might be as low as one. Um, so check with your medical professional. But, but uh, Brazil nuts are great, but don't eat too many of them. Um, so healthy nuts. And then uh, some oils that we talked about, grass-fed butter, ghee. I actually don't do that well on grass-fed butter and ghee. Some people do really well. I do better with coconut oil. That's just my digestive system. And those are healthy for most humans. So uh, check those out. So grass-fed butter, grass-fed ghee. Um, avocado oil, olive oil, lots and lots of olive oil. Dr. Stephen Gundry says the only purpose of food is to get olive oil into your mouth. And so when I cook cruciferous vegetables, yesterday I cooked Brussels sprouts. Um, I went shopping at Costco at one of these lives. I'll share with you what I bought at Costco. A lot of people are curious and I'll show you all the things that I buy and um, I'll give you some ideas. But I, when I roast cruciferous vegetables, broccoli or cauliflower or Brussels sprouts, I just put a lot of olive oil on it, salt and pepper. They're delicious. Olive oil, salt and pepper on vegetables, delicious. Just wonderful. So olive oil, I really, really recommend. I also add olive oil into my smoothies to get some healthy fat in my smoothies to make sure um, I can absorb the fat soluble vitamins. So that's what I have for you. Suggestions for weight loss, low carb. I'm gonna see how many questions that are asked that I can answer with low carb. This would be really funny, and then we will sign off. So questions about for weight loss, low carb. Um, what do you think of pink Himalayan sea salt? I think it's great. Steamed, cooking with olive oil. Yes, actually, uh, so there, this was a myth. Um, you actually can cook with olive oil. I usually don't fry with it, or, or I usually don't saute with it, but you can. It's safe to heat up. I forget what podcast I heard that on. So uh, heat does not denature olive oil, but you can also cook with um, coconut oil or MCT oil. By the way, MCT oil is amazing for your brain. It's quickly turned into ketones by your liver or ketone bodies. That becomes energy for your brain. That's a big darn deal. Garlic is great. Pink salt. Uh, what do I do to get more testosterone? Ladies and gentlemen, and those non-binary, what do we say? Go low carb. Actually, you want to eat more meat to get more testosterone and exercise more and get good sleep. How do I feel about intermittent fasting? It's great. Healthy nuts, which one is unhealthy? Um, peanuts, which are not nuts, those are legumes. I would avoid that. Cashews have a fair amount of carbs in them, so you may consider avoiding those if you're on the keto diet. Gen oh, and then I'd avoid seeds compared to nuts. Generally speaking, nuts are healthy. The best nuts are almonds and walnuts. And then nuts can have lectins. I'm actually soaking my walnuts. Let me see if I can show this to you right now. I just bought some walnuts and then I'm soaking them right now in this fancy doodah of a bowl. Soaking walnuts helps remove the lectins in them. So I'm gonna soak those for eight hours, pour out the water. The water will be brown. I might, I might broadcast that or videotape that. Videotape, uh, film that. Uh, and then I wanna pour off those lectins because um, the, the plants, plants have plant defenses. Dr. Stephen Gundry talks about this. And so by soaking them, we help remove those lectins. Same thing with beans. If you're gonna eat beans, I don't recommend you do, but if you're gonna eat them, soak them for 24 to 48 hours, change the water every 24 hours. You can even add a little bit of baking soda. I think it was like half a, you can add a little bit of baking soda to help remove more of the lectins, soak them and then pressure cook them. That'll be good. And so uh, other foods that have lectins are tomatoes. Uh, most traditional preparations of tomatoes, peel them and seed them. So you don't wanna eat the peel, you don't wanna eat the seeds of a tomato, that's a bad idea. Um, they're just, they're, they're, they're plant defenses to try to trigger inflammation in your body to tell you, don't eat me. Plants don't necessarily want to be eaten. <coughs> Lovely with cauliflower, yes indeed. Botox, how do I feel about it? Um, so Botox, interesting, you mentioned feelings. Botox actually decreases emotions. So if you shoot Botox here, you then, you then can't go like this. You can't be as expressive. I can't be like, hmm, what are they saying? Or really? And so with Botox, you're actually less expressive and that actually decreases your ability to express emotions and to see emotions in others. Hey, puppy, what are you barking about? So I, I don't think Botox is a good idea. Thoughts on beans. Yeah, beans are filled with lectins. How about ghee? Ghee's great. Pumpkin seeds. I think those are mixed. So pumpkin seeds, I think are good for testosterone. And 
I don't know about the lectins and pumpkin seeds. I, I, I don't know. I, w- I would search and see what's good. Or we'll check out Stephen Gudry's book. Ooh, the doggies are here. Warren, you want to say hi to my, uh, my live? Hey, hey everybody. It's my, it's my buddy Warren. I'm staying with him and his partner here in, in Austin, Texas. I met him at a self-development conference. By the way, I highly recommend you go to a self-development conference so you can meet wonderful people. Some Do of my, it. Some of, my <laughs> some of my best friends I've met at self-development conferences. They're lifelong friends because you have a shared interest in developing yourself. So that's, I've met some of my really good friends at self-development conferences. Um, I need to decrease my emotions. Uh, ha, ha, ha. Um, go low carb. Um, I don't recommend Botox. Songbird, I don't know the seeds and... I don't know about the seeds and tomatoes. Yeah, avoid those. Avoid the skin too. How to balance hormones. Low carb. Thank you. You're welcome. Have you anywhere to live? Well, I do I do now. I'm living here in Austin. I'm staying with my friend. Keto's great. Ke- uh, keto, uh, it's difficult to do because there's specific things and it can be painful. And so make sure you... Um, I would work with a coach or somebody who specializes in keto. I've coached a couple of people in keto and that... It's been fun and I've, I've helped them lose weight on it. Um, you really got to stick with it though. When people go off keto, oh, excuse me, let me rephrase. You want to cycle in and out of keto. So one day a week, you go off keto a little bit. That's really helpful. Uh, that keeps you uh, your body in metabolic flexibility. So keto or ketogenesis or ketosis is the metabolic state of burning fat for energy. When we eat glucose and we eat enough glucose that kicks us out of ketosis, and then we're in just regular glucose burning energy. We want to toggle back and forth. We want to switch back and forth. The way to do that is to be into ketosis five or six days a week. And then one day a week, maybe you eat a sweet potato or maybe you eat some black rice or you eat some carbs. I wouldn't recommend eating candy those days or eating ice cream, but you can, you can go out of ketosis those days. Also, keto, like most diets, um, needs to be done correctly. Otherwise, it can be unhealthy. For example, can you be vegan and unhealthy? Let me know in the chat. Can you be vegan and eat unhealthy foods? Answer, absolutely. Oreos. Oreos are vegan. Are Oreos healthy? No. You can be a vegan and eat nothing but Oreos. Are you going to be healthy? No. The vegan diet does not guarantee health. Can you be paleo and be unhealthy? I don't know. You can, yes, you can eat unhealthy meats, and that would be really bad. You can also eat non-organic foods. That would be uh, paleo and, uh, and dangerous. So for example, eating non-organic berries, uh, those, are, those are sprayed with pesticides and herbicides. I don't recommend that. If you're gonna get any food organic, make sure you get your blueberries, strawberries, blackberries organic. So you can be unhealthy on the paleo diet, though it's difficult um, if, if you're eating the right, right stuff. Other, uh, you could also eat a bunch of dairy. Dairy, I think, is dairy paleo? I don't know. Um, keto, can you be unhealthy on keto? Yes, you can eat a bunch of cheese, a bunch of, you can eat a bunch of bad fats. You can eat, uh, you know, omega-6 fats. Omega-6 are the inflammatory fats. So you need a bunch of peanut butter. Actually, I don't know if peanut butter is keto, but you can eat, eat a bunch of uh, bad fats on keto. That's not good. You can also not eat vegetables. You want to eat lots and lots of vegetables on keto. If you do keto, eat a ton of vegetables, mostly vegetables, some protein and, and fat. A lot of protein and fat actually, or excuse me, a lot of fat. But you, if you do any of these diets, you want to make sure that you are doing it correctly. The general rule is organic food, high quality protein. So if you're not, uh, so if you're eating meat, you want the high quality meat, the grass fed beef, the grass fed lamb, the grass fed butter. Are you noticing a pattern? We want to eat our animals and animal products in the way that nature designed them. Boy, that's kind of like a, a preacher standing up here. You want to eat your foods the way that nature designed them. You want your chicken out in the pasture. You don't want them in a cage. You want your cows eating, eating grass, not being force-fed grain, and so on. So that's the idea. And if you stick with this idea that we want to eat like our ancestors did, and we want to eat, we want to eat animals or animal products, if you do, uh, if you do want to eat animal products, you want to eat them uh, in a way that is consistent with the way that they were raised. That's really important. And it's much more kind to the animals. I think industrial farming of animals is absolutely cruel, and it's bad, and I don't support it. And I don't support it with my dollars. I'm not going to buy animal products where the animals were um, abused. And I think feeding an animal food it doesn't normally eat is abusive. Also, keeping them in cages, I think, is abusive. So I don't support that. I support uh, sustainable agriculture for, uh, for, all, 
sustainable agriculture for animal products, meaning grass-fed beef, keeping them outside, not stressed, they live a good life, and then, um, and then when we eat them, it's healthy for us. So that's, that's the idea. Remedies for UTIs, um, I would say reduce your sugar and uh, drink less alcohol and drink more water, but that's more of a medical question. I'm a neuroscientist, I'm much more in the brain and the brain's connected with the gut. Um, I don't, I'm, I'm not a specialist in UTIs. Dallas, Texas here, awesome. So I'm gonna sign off here. I may come back on later this evening. I don't know, I'm having dinner with my sister. We're going out for barbecue and that'll be fun. Um, so I may, uh, I may take a picture of us at dinner, but I, I don't know if I'll be back for, um, I don't know if I'll be back for a live this evening, but it's been great talking with you. A couple of things for you, a couple of gifts for you. Um, one is a free masterclass on how to prevent Alzheimer's disease. If you go underneath my profile, there's my link tree there. There's a bunch of free stuff. So one is the free masterclass. It's so, so good. Um, just click there. It goes to a landing page. It goes to a page where you can enter your name and email. You register for free and then you get to watch it. It's great. It's 45 minutes of really high quality science that I put together for you that you can use to reduce your risk of Alzheimer's. I'm going to share with you the six types of Alzheimer's, how to prevent them. I'm going to share with you uh, supplements to take to reduce the risk of Alzheimer's. It's really good. I'm also going to share with you delicious foods to eat to reduce your risk of Alzheimer's. So that's a free masterclass underneath my profile. I also recently started a Patreon. If you want to be a patron of the show, if you want to uh, if you, if you want to, you want to be a financial supporter of the show of what I'm doing, that would be great. That's under Patreon, just a few dollars a month makes a really big difference. And when you sign up as a patron, I'm going to share with you where to buy, where I buy aniracetam. Aniracetam is one of my favorite nootropics, one of my favorite, uh, brain boosting drugs. It, it's a, for, it's a former pharmaceutical that's available in the United States without a prescription. Let me tell you about aniracetam. You're going to love this. So uh, in double-blind, placebo-controlled studies, aniracetam uh, reverses cognitive decline, reverses memory loss in people with Alzheimer's disease. Here's the study. So this is a study from Europe. And so they had a placebo group and then they had a, a, an aniracetam group. I'll spell it A-N-I-R-A-C-E-T-A-M. You can find it yourself. Uh, a lot of people ask me where I get it. I don't share where I get it on these lives because then it gets sold out and then I can't buy it. So I'll share with you, um, you know, if you become a patron, there's a document that shares with you where I get it. So, um, and when I share brands on my live, or when I share brands in videos, they get bought up real quickly, which is, it's fun, but it's annoying to me because then I can't buy the stuff that I used to buy. So here's the study. So here's the placebo group. They already have Alzheimer's disease. They have early stage Alzheimer's. They take the placebo, their memory continues to decline. Here's the, here's the group that took, takes aniracetam. Their memory's already declining, and then they're taking aniracetam, their memory levels off, and then it goes up. It's higher at the end of six months than it was at the beginning. That's amazing. So aniracetam improved memory loss in people with, with Alzheimer's. It, it didn't just slow it down or stop it. It improved their memory. Double-blind, placebo-controlled studies. Yes, barefoot, earth goddess, that is how to spell it. Uh, it's hard to find. It's legal to buy in the United States. It's legal to sell. It is legal to possess. Um, in Europe, it's different. Europe, it is a prescription drug. Check with your local laws to make sure you are um, following your local laws. So if you want to get Anorastim, you can search online. And when you become a patron, I'll share with you where I get mine. Um, and please buy it quickly. If you become a patron, last time I did that, it, it sold out pretty quickly. Where, where can you find? I'm telling you, Gypsy Nurse, you can search online and search uh, and do your best or you can become a patron and I will share with you where I get mine. I'm not gonna tell you where I get mine on this because it'll be sold out and that's not good for anybody because then I won't be able to get it and I'll be kind of um, not pleased with that. It is a preventative. I take aniracetam myself a couple times a week. Uh, I, I have my parents take it. It feels good. It's, I really like it. It's just a, I might, I might take some because I'm about to socialize with my sister and um, I wanna be uh, my best self, and I want to be in a positive mood, and I feel in a good mood when I'm on Anorastim. It's a mood booster. It improves mood. I love to give it to people who are tired at Burning Man. It also improves thinking. I, my sister is really smart, um, and so I want to be want to be mentally sharp when I'm with her, and I want to enjoy our time together. And it also increases memory, and I want to remember the times when I visit her. And so I'm going to take. I'm and now I'm convincing myself. I'm now going to take it tonight because I want to um, be mentally sharp be in an emotionally good mood, and I want to remember our time together. I saw a question about creatine. Creatine's great. Uh, creatine is safe. Um, how much? So you can do the loading phase where you do like 20 grams a day and then five grams a day for maintenance. 
Um, I find that I don't need to do that as um, I've done it a number of times. If also, if you eat a lot of meat, uh, that, that gives you creatine. Creatine is shown to increase energy. It does this by giving a phosphate for, to make ATP. So ATP is adenosine triphosphate. That stands for three phosphates. And then it, when it becomes used for energy, it becomes adenosine diphosphate, two phosphates. So it needs a third phosphate to get back to, to ATP. Creatine basically makes phosphate ab available for ATP. So that's how it increases energy. It makes it easier to make um make energy. Hi, Ludmila. And so, um, so creatine increases energy in the brain, increases um, mental endurance. When you're working on a difficult cognitive task and improves memory, creatine is pretty great. Can you take anorastim daily? Yes, you can. My sister is not a doctor. My sister, um, she works for an energy company. Um, it's good to cycle things. If you're over 65, you probably don't need to cycle anorastim. You can just take it every day for the rest of your life. Um, and it's probably a good idea to not take it every single day. Try taking a day off a month or something like that. Um, but interesting is very, very safe. It's not addictive. You can take it most days. Okay, I'm going to get going. There's a fair amount of traffic in Austin. I want to make sure I'm on time. I don't want to keep my sister waiting. She's my older sister. And so when I, when I screw up, I kind of have to report to her. Sorry, Julie. Sorry, I'm late. Um, I'm, I'm just kidding, but she, she's wonderful. I, and by the way, if you have, if you have older brothers or sisters, uh, drop that in the chat. If you have brothers or sisters, just, just drop that in the chat. Let me know who I'm speaking with. And so what I've noticed is that, um, I do, please spell again, anorastam, A-N-I-R-A-C-E-T-A-M. Um, if you become a patron, I'll share with you where I buy mine. So, um, yes, a lot of brothers and sisters here. I've, yes, so bossy. I, they can be. So what I've noticed is when I've come to my brothers and sisters, I've done this for old, my older sister, younger sister, younger brother. I just said, hey, I want you to know this. And I'm, I'm tearing up saying this. It's really, it's really important. I said, hey, I want you to know this. I love you. And I want a really great relationship with you. And I haven't been my best self when I've been around you. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the mistakes I've made in the past when we were kids. And I'm sorry that I've been unpleasant at family gatherings. I'm sorry that I drank too much. I'm sorry that I didn't listen. I'm really sorry. And I really want a great relationship with you. Let's work on it this year. I don't know what it's going to take. You're important to me. We're going to be brothers and sisters for, you know, the next 80 years. Let's, I'd like, I'm committed to this. And so um, I just want you to know that's where I'm coming from. And I really want a great relationship with you. Saying that to all my, I have three brothers and sisters. I have two sisters, one brother. Saying that to all of them has really made a big difference. And my parents, I said that to my parents said, look, I'm sorry that I would come home and drink too much. I'm sorry that I, was co I would come home and be arrogant and, and try to show you how smart I am. I, just, I want to have a great relationship, re relationship with you, mom and dad. Let's, let's work on this together. It's made a huge difference. So, so call someone you love, call someone in your family, and just tell them you love them, you're sorry for the mistakes that you've made, how that's maybe reduced the quality of your relationship or reduced closeness, and that you care about them, that you love them, and that you want what's best for them, and you want to have a great relationship you don't know what that is or what that looks like or how to do that, but just put it in their court and say, hey, I'm, I want to have a great relationship with you. What can we do or what can I do? What can I do to fix some of the mistakes of the past? Um, I'm happy. I, I want to do whatever it takes and I'm happy for this to be a long-term thing. For some, some of my family members, it took years, years. That's okay. Some of them, it happened a lot faster than I thought. Um, and some of them happened by proxy. I, impl I improved the relationship with one and then it, it got better with the other one because now they're talking well about me. So uh, yeah, so be humble. Thank you for the comments. Please be humble. Be, be, just be grateful for this person in your life and you know, say, I, I love you and I want to have a great relationship with you. And it's okay if it takes years. I'm committed to this. And that is, I want you to know that. Oh, and then I had, this, I had this silly argument with one of my siblings. And it was really intense. It was in front of the family. The rest of the family thought it was funny. And then us two, we were kind of, um, and this was recently too. This is like in the last year. And we went on a walk afterwards. Uh, a couple days later, I said, look, I want you to know that I'm sorry for what I said when we were both passionate at that dinner. I'm sorry. I, I didn't want to do that. And we've been making great progress. I love where we are in our relationship. I'm sorry for that part. They apologize as well. And... Um, and it was actually a good thing because it showed that we could have conflict and make mistakes and upset each other and still come back and say, hey, that happens. We love each other. Um, we don't need to let that tarnish uh, the progress we've made. And we've made great progress and we're closer than we've ever been in, in, in years. 
So that's, that's what I will leave you with. I love you. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. I will talk to you soon.